Hey guys, my name is Shai. Welcome to your Archangel Messages. If you'd like to get straight to the reading, go ahead and pick your card. The timestamps will be down below. But first, I'd like to talk just a little bit about what I like to call the Christian hangover. If you clicked on this video and you're kind of sitting there going, I don't know why I'm here, I don't really believe in angels, or I'm just kind of not into that because that's kind of Christian and, and weird, I totally get it. And that used to be me. And yeah, I call that the Christian hangover because there are a lot of things in spirituality that we might like to avoid because of either just general cultural hangups or things from our childhood. So for a long time, you know, as I've been going through my awakening here, I didn't, I just kind of ignored anything to do with angels because I was like, no, nah, that's too, that's too religious. That's weird religious stuff. I don't like it because I have hangups from my childhood <laughs> about that. But I would just like to throw that out there that all of the religious interpretations of angels that you might have come across is just that, you know, archangels are, you can view them as simply higher dimensional beings, you know, and they absolutely exist outside of any <laughs> religious distortions. So you don't even have to think about them as angels if you don't want, you know, that's just the word that we use. And I mean, we could come up with a brand new word, but that would be a little bit confusing. We might as well roll with the one we got, right? But you know, for, for you in your own in your own personal space, you can think of them as something else entirely. You don't need to even think of the word angels. So yeah, I would just say don't let yourself be limited by religious distortions. You can throw all of that out and view archangels however you like. It's actually really weird for me to be doing this reading. I'm surprised because I have only been connecting with the Archangels for like a month and a half. It, it kind of like Metatron like blasted into my life like all of a sudden. And it's been really absolutely fascinating. So if you've never connected with angels before and you're but you found this video, that's definitely a sign that things are starting to shift for you. And you have the opportunity to be more consciously aware of how you already connect with them. Because of course we're always connecting with them. You know, the archangels are are permeating everything and they're always with you. We just don't always notice if we don't want to notice. So I think that addresses that. Let's get to the cards. Hey Pile One, welcome to your reading. I love this central card here that came up, Whispers. If you listen to my blurb in the intro, you know that I literally just said that, you know, the archangels are always with you and they're communicating with you whether you know it or not. And this card really exemplifies that. They are whispering in your ear. All you have to do is listen. And I think one of the larger messages here is that there is more, there are more beings trying to communicate with you than you maybe are consciously noticing, you need to learn to listen more carefully to the whispers. This can come in signs and synchronicities or like literal whispers in your ear um, if you're developing your clear audience. And be careful with that because clear audience doesn't always come in like external sound. It can be your, you know, your internal monologue, like your voice running through your head when you're thinking all day. Sometimes those thoughts are actually, <laughs> they're not really your thoughts. It might sound like your, like your voice in your head, but Really, that's some, somebody else coming in, communicating with you. So definitely pay attention to that. Pay attention to the whispers. Listening to these whispers is going to help you guys move through like a period of confusion. Here you are right now as the Queen of Pentacles. I mean, this is you right now or in your recent past where you were actually doing pretty good, especially like materially. You were kind of, you know queen of your garden. You were king of a castle. You had everything together, at least enough, right? You had reached a certain level of stability, but suddenly things are starting to shift and get quite a bit more confusing for you because we have two of swords and the seven of cups right next to each other. To have both of these come up, you know, you have the two of swords, meaning you have like choices. You're facing a choice, like a fork in the road. You don't know which way to go, but there's also more to that, uh, with the two of swords, there's always this element of 
like self blinding, like almost like you've got your head in the sand and you're not seeing your choices clearly. You got to take your blindfold off and see and take a like a really good unbiased look. And Seven of Cups, you know, you don't know which way to go. Some of these have, you know, really auspicious signs in them, but other ones have, you know, a skull or a snake. You don't know. Again, you're not seeing your choices clearly. The, the, the doubling up here is you need to open your eyes. You guys need to open your eyes. And I don't want you, like, I'm not telling you need to open your eyes. You know, the archangels want you to open your eyes. There's something you need to see here. Um, I'm getting like an Archangel Gabriel vibe. Uh, so you guys can see if he's been coming in in for you or will be shortly. Something about navigation. You need to navigate your path with like clarity of focus. I've had some experiences lately uh, with Gabriel where I had kind of a complicated day with a lot of choices and a lot of things that could go wrong. And I reached out to Archangel Gabriel and he totally like smoothed the way. I had like the best luck that day. Every it was let's like, you know, imagine driving for like two hours through traffic and hitting every single red light. I mean green light. <laughs> hitting every single green light. Everything going well. It was like my whole day kind of flowed like that. So feel free to reach out and ask for assistance in smoothing your path because you need to see what the outcomes are. Are. If you're walking down a path and there are like seven paths, be careful before you decide to go all the way down a path. You need to look a little bit ahead. You go, okay, what's down that path? Down that path. Is, is it a crown? Is it a skull? <laughs> you know, is it a snake? Is it a flower? Is it a tower? What is down there? You, you need to figure out the outcome or at least, you know, the likely trajectory. You need to see what is in store for you before you go down that path. Don't go rushing down paths because you don't know what pitfalls might be waiting down below. All of this is to help you come into your own. I feel like you guys are going to be building something. Eight of Pentacles. This is always about gaining mastery uh, learning new skills and working towards the future. You guys are definitely like aligning with your future trajectory, but there's definitely something here about having to get clear on your own like center space because you have fifth house creativity and Gemini. I think Gemini and I think it tells you right there. And the fifth house is all about Leo. So this is definitely like a self, a self energy. I mean, not necessarily self ish, not even necessarily self-centered, but you're being asked to look to your own business, like focus on your own problems, your own development. You need to be paying attention to your thoughts, um, which actually comes back to, uh, yeah, this is, wow, yeah, Whispers and Gemini, that, that is really like Claire audience. So I really think the, the archangels are talking to you through your thoughts. Um, you know, I have moon, I have my moon in Gemini and that gives me such a like running monologue in my head that whew, sometimes in life it has been a bit much, but now I'm starting to notice uh, all the things that run through my head. Those are really messages. A lot of the time the messages coming in from um, benevolent sources, sometimes malevolent sources, but I'm leaving those farther and farther behind. Lately these days, it's all, mostly just benevolent sources, which is nice. So really pay attention to what you are thinking figure out, try to figure out what the source of that might be. And then all of this is going to be building up to some kind of like creative project, getting this fifth house creativity with the eight of pentacles. Th this, I mean, if you have been thinking of or are already are working on like an artistic project, some kind of business, this is like really, really good news. This would be saying, even, you know, if you're starting a business, this could be saying that you're going to be prosperous and that it is going to be successful. And if you're working on a creative project, maybe that, you know, you there's potential here to even be making money off of your off of your art. And I mean, really, it's never been a better time. I mean, I know right now it's kind of hard to start a business or do anything, but kind of just the general energy going forward for the next few years, there's never been a better time, you know, 
probably in a few thousand years, honestly, where we can make a living doing what we love. Really actually make a living doing what we love. We're all going to get out of the cubicle, <laughs> right? We don't need to work in cubicle farms anymore. We're going to be getting out of that and we're going to be able to thrive following our passions. Passions. Fifth house is all about our passions. And I think just a couple of these moon cards. I tried to retire this deck, but I keep feeling pulled to pull a few more cards. So you guys are going to get a couple of these. Confidence is your key to success. New moon in Leo. Well, there you go. You got fifth house and new moon in Leo. Definitely Leo energy coming through. Like I was just saying, guys, confidence is your key to success. You you are being called to focus on your own self and to develop your own internal strength and to shine that out. That is how you are going to be able to manifest this, this project you're working on. Work through your fears, new moon and Scorpio. That's, that's like the same message. Yeah. Confidence is your key to success. Work through your fears. So if you felt, have felt in the past, like you were too small or too unskilled or just, you know, didn't have it in you to work on this project. Well, the whispers are coming through now that, you know, now is the time. This is your time to shine. You guys can do it. You know, the energy has shifted. You're in a new paradigm now. So moving forward, things that even if you tried and failed, maybe you've started a band like six times before and you could never even get a gig, right? Well, the energy has shifted now. Things are going to be different, you know, once uh, bars open back up and you can go gigging, right? <laughs> a time to give rather than take. Yeah, you guys, and that came up right on top of a uh, Eight of Pentacles. You guys have something to share with the world. You guys have something to share. And the bottom of your deck is your commitment is being tested. Confidence is your key to success. Work through your fears. You guys, <laughs> step out of your comfort zone. Um, <laughs> conclusions are within reach. Okay. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'm gonna, these just keep coming out. So clearly, guys, uh, you can see the message uh, coming through here. I don't really think this is much of a whisper. This is a, like a shouting at you. You guys need to bust out of your comfort zone. You need to look to your own power within to see what you have to give to the world, see what you can shine out and pay attention to the archangels and all of your other guides whispering to you, whispering to you in your mind, because those thoughts, the thoughts that you have in your head, the thoughts are not all your own. Sometimes they are messages coming from somewhere else. So I'm going to leave it at that. I never pulled this many Oracle cards for anybody. So I hope this gave you a little bit of hint about how to move forward. Thanks for tuning in, guys. I hope to see you again soon. Hey, Pile 2. Welcome to your reading. You guys are about to transform in a major way. You have... <laughs> okay, you've got Scorpio. I transform. You have enlightenment. There's the flower of life. You have underneath Scorpio, I transform. You have transformation. This is the death card in a typical tarot. And obviously it is associated with Scorpio. And next up you have star seed. This would be the fool card in a regular tarot. I don't typically like to talk about star seed stuff to just everybody because I feel like that's weird <laughs> but uh with this all coming up i have to bring it up like this is the message this is the message you're meant to get the archangels want you to receive this message and actually when i was shuffling your cards i only wanted to take out three and first of all i, I wasn't even going to use this deck this is the star child tarot i wasn't going to use this deck um but it like really wanted to come out and then i picked up the box and was shuffling and like all these cards just like jumped out like like all of them and mass just and I picked them up and saw them and I was like, holy crap. <laughs> uh, you know, and perspective, which is the hanged man and then empress and two of cups. So I'm going to get uh, into it more, but I wanted to lay that out. And this is all bookmarked by two of wands and two of cups. 
Um, the only card I haven't mentioned yet is this third house messages. This is the confirmation that, well, this message is for you. And also that there are beings connecting with you guys, not archangels. Yes. Metatron. Absolutely. But also you you guys are getting activations from all over the place. So how do I want to get into this? Guys, I like this is a star seed awakening. This is uh, this is like a star seed activation. And I'm going to just roll with that. So if you guys aren't interested at all in star seed stuff, this is your chance to exit. You can go check out some other reading. Um but as it is, we're we're going to charge ahead because somebody is remembering that they have had lives on other planets. Somebody is remembering that they are not from Earth. Somebody is remembering that there is so much more to their consciousness than this, that you are remembering that there are layers and layers and layers and layers and layers and layers and layers, and layers of possibilities and densities and dimensions This is like major, major shift, this transformation energy coming, coming through, you know, enlightenment. And I'd like to talk about the flower of life as this design back here. You can, you know, Google it flower of life. If you don't already know what it is, it's a pretty, you know, commonly known symbol. Um, to me, it symbolizes like the neural net that, I mean, first of all, that everything in all of the entire omniverse and all of the entire cosmos shares that we're all connected we're all connected like little little points in a web all connected through the dimensions and through each other um but also in terms of a starseed awakening it's when you start to remember your 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 parallel lives and when you start to remember like connect with your higher selves and you in reconnecting it's like you're coming back to like your, your overmind, your, you know, your, your super brain, <laughs> your interdimensional consciousness is all connecting, right? Imagine like a line going from you, connecting you to all of your other selves that are living similar lives in, you know, parallel versions of earth, connecting all of those versions of you to you in higher dimensions. You're all part of one overmind, it's just like, I always think of it like the intergalactic filaments. If you guys have heard, you know, kind of recently they discovered that there are strings, you know, strands of gas and particles and dust and stuff connecting the galaxies so that, you know, the whole universe is like this brain all, all interconnected. It's all of this, it's all of this web. We're all connected. And right now you are like reconnecting with yourself. You're reconnecting with all of the lost parts of yourself, all of the parallel and higher aspects of yourself you have been having a sneaking suspicion about this with this two of wands. You've been putting two and two together and this has probably been sneaking up on your mind for a while. You've been, you know, questioning things, wondering about things, starting to have thoughts that are like really, really out there. And then bam, 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 bam. <laughs> Transformation. Um, two cards on top of each other confirming this, that you are like literally you will never be the same again. You might have to leave a bunch of old crap behind, but I feel like you're probably really ready for this. I don't like this isn't like a super traumatic like death experience, right? This is like just a massive leveling up and moving on to who you're supposed to be. This you're becoming, you know, you're having your starseed awakening. And if you guys are already starseeds, all, all of this means is that this is like a reawakening. It is a re-leveling up, you know. Think back to, to your own starseed awakening or just your spiritual awakening in general. A lot of people might go through like a spiritual awakening and then a starseed awakening. For me, it was all, it all happened at once. Like the starseed awakening actually like triggered my spiritual awakening, interestingly. But so whatever is going on with you, you guys are like leveling up to a whole new level of awareness of who you are and what you are. Gaining new perspective. This, you know, this isn't so much... Um, this is the hanged man card in a regular tarot, but you know, this card is more of seeing things not so much from a new perspective, but from like multiple perspectives. Look, she's like split herself and she's looking off 
in different directions. So really, and it's under this enlightenment card with this flower of life, you are going to be able to see things from the perspective of your other selves, of your higher selves, of your parallel selves. You're going to be able to see how everything looks to them. This is like you zooming out your perspective just massively, massively, massively. You're going to be getting a crazy bird's eye view. And it's really going to take you out of your human experience for a little while, guys. If you feel like completely ungrounded, completely incapable of dealing with your human life, even with connecting with your people around you, that's like... That's okay. I mean, I know that's uncomfortable and can suck, but it's it's going to be okay. That is just a phase. Um, I mean, you know, I'm thinking back to my own Star Seed Awakening, which wasn't, which like, you know, wasn't very long ago. I mean, it feels like lifetime since then, but really it was like last year. <laughs> so I can remember, you know, thinking, oh, am I going to feel like this out of my body, out of my life, out of earth, like forever? Well, no, you know, you're going to come back down uh, into the ground. Um, but it's just when you're going through these transformations, it's like you're, you're taken out a little bit. So just uh, kind of float through that as you can. You know, you're, you're reaching enlightenment. So you, it's hard to, you know, be sitting around worrying about the taxes and cooking dinner when you're up there. Eventually you'll come back and you'll be able to exist in the, you know, the higher realms of consciousness and deeply grounded into your human body. That is the ultimate goal. And actually that's where you're going. That's totally where you're going because look at his, you got the empress. She is the like the connection, the conduit between those higher realms and between being grounded in earth. So this is where you're going. Once once you have gained your once you've gone through your transformation, once you've had your star seed awakening or your reawakening, uh, once you've gained all of your new perspectives, you're going to be having it all. You're going to have your cake and eat it too. You're going to be, you know, your divine cosmic star seed expanded self and you're going to be the you that you always were walking around you know walking your dog and cleaning up after your cats you can do it all and this is reconfirmed by the two of cups i mean this can be a um a partnership for you an external partnership you know romantic friendship um even just with your starseed allies your guides you know your aliens whatever um it can also be just you know finding interwoven inter internal peace with all of the different aspects of yourself. This is like, you know, harmony and balance and everything coming into peace, peace and harmony. Beautiful, beautiful guys. Um, I have to pull you guys some cards from the Starseed Oracle. Star Keeper, Cosmic Ancestor, Seed the Light by Staying Grounded. This is really synchronous for me because I pulled this card for myself this morning. And actually, when I was just shuffling the cards, I was thinking about this card, wondering if it was going to come out. So come on, focus. So here we go. This card is all about um, <laughs> reconnecting with your soul fragments remembering why you came to earth first, first of all obviously remembering that you did choose to come to earth that you did this to yourself as much as you might hate your earth life sometimes remembering the far-flung aspects of your consciousness and remembering that you came here to help with you know the shift in consciousness that is happening right now you came here to help and you don't necessarily need to be worrying about what you need to do because you're already doing it you just need to be here, be present, try to get grounded, which even if you don't feel grounded right now, you will get grounded because you're going to have the Empress in this Two of Cups. And the more grounded you can get, the more you will like seed the light. You will seed the con your consciousness. You will seed the cosmic energy down into the earth. You are um, going to be, like some people call it like grid work, but really you just, it's just right now, yeah, and this is an Archangel reading. This is coming from Metatron. There, I mean, lots of different beings are working on it right now. But for me, I'm more aware of Metatron's role in laying down a new, people are calling it a unity grid. Essentially, it's a new grid of energy going around the earth, connecting like, you know, power places and all of the humans, connecting everybody. And it is helping usher in the age of Aquarius. It is getting us all aligned so that we can all operate kind of with like, 
with a more unified mind, we can remember how interconnected we are. Think of all of those Aquarian energies, right? We're going to be able to live and function as a collective of individuals, right? Not, not a mindless collective like ants where, you know, each individual ant like doesn't really have much of an individuality and doesn't have any, like, you know, doesn't have a lot of free will. We don't want to be like that. We also don't want to want to be like a total mess of anarchy where everybody is like disconnected like we've been. This unity grid is coming in. One of the beings helping with that is Metatron, although there's of course many more. And all of us, especially star seeds, we're we are wherever you are on the planet, you're supposed to be there because you need to be there to anchor in this new energetic grid that is going to allow humanity to be a collective of individuals is going to connect us all in in unity it's it's hard to explain i hope this is more of just an energetic transmission right now um i'm i actually kind of feel like i'm just like listening to myself talk i feel pretty detached <laughs> so this is i hope you can just kind of feel the energy here and kind of get what i'm what i'm what i'm trying to reflect to you this is coming from from Metatron. <laughs> he he wants you to know that you're here to help anchor this light grid into the earth to help everybody come into unity. And yeah, if you don't like where you live right now or you don't or maybe you're stuck somewhere weird, wow, yeah, I'm getting shivers. This is important for somebody. If you don't like where you live or if you're stuck somewhere weird and you just you don't like where you are physically, know that you're literally supposed to be there. Like you were sent there to be grounding this grid into that specific location. <laughs> like you're where, you're where you're supposed to be, even if it's infuriating or frustrating or weird. That's where you're supposed to be. And you might, some of you might be called to travel to different places all over the place. Some of you might be called to like be stuck in one place. Whatever it is, you know, you're where you're supposed to be. You can't screw this up, guys. You can't mess this up. You're exactly doing what you're supposed to be doing. You're where you're supposed to be. And... It, it's good. <laughs> it's good, even if it doesn't feel like it. Just just to hang in there. And okay, two more cards jumped out. Jump in. Andromeda in energy. Adventure. Say yes to change. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you guys are going through massive transformations and you're being asked to just roll with it. And this is also the Andromedans chiming in for you. If you resonate Andromedan, this is a, a total clue either that you... Some of you definitely have had lives in Andromeda. Uh, for others of you, this will just be the Andromedas are coming in for you because you can resonate with them without ever having like, you know, lived there, right? So jump in. It, next time you're presented with an opportunity and you can feel like the energy of it resonating, you can feel that it's right, that it's good, but your mind might be going, oh, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. This, this, and this. No, jump in, jump in. The Andromedans want you to jump in. Some of you absolutely are Andromedan, absolutely. And last card is the void. Stop. Embrace winter. Great cosmic womb. This is where you guys go to transform. If you're in, if you're in darkness right now, if you don't know what's happening, if you feel like the void is closing in around you, it's okay because that's where you're supposed to be in order to go through these shifts. You need to... Go into a place of emptiness so that you can reset and grow. Also, there are aspects of yourself that hang out in the void and you can braid them in. You can make contact with these aspects of yourself and you can bring them in. You can retrieve those soul fragments. And they're not really, at least in my experience, the aspect of myself that I braided in that was hanging out in the void wasn't like a fragment. She was like, a huge, huge, large portion of my consciousness, of my oversoul. And she came in for me and the Andromedans helped me braid her in. And now here we are together, reunited, being more awesome than ever. So be aware of dreams or visions or just sensations, things in meditation where you feel like you are in a vast emptiness and you can feel like a frictionless wind flowing around you, that is the ether. That is the void. That is where everything comes from. That is every, where everything will return to. 
And some of you have aspects of yourself out there that you are going to bring in. You're going to connect. Just, just be open to that. That can be a really, um, I mean, temporarily disturbing experience just because of the massive influx of energy. But once you move through that, you will be more yourself than ever before. You'll be better than ever before. And that will help you in your work of seeding the light and bringing down this unity grid with Metatron's help into the earth. And I think, <laughs> I think I'm going to leave it at that. Thank you guys for being here and tuning into this. I love it when starseed messages like this like blast out because you and me were meant, even if it, it could just be one person it resonates with this, but that's fine because you and me were meant to, to connect for this. It was always meant to be. This was meant to happen. We were supposed to meet like this. I feel, I can feel your energy here, you know, with me. This wouldn't, this reading wouldn't have happened if you weren't watching it. I know it seems like I filmed it now and you're watching it then, but really this is all happening at once because everything is happening simultaneously. So this is us meeting. So <laughs> hello, goodbye. I love you. I hope to see you again soon. And of course, I will see you in the ether. Bye. Hey, pile three, welcome to your reading. You guys are frustrated. <laughs> You've got this two of cups equilibrium in the center, which is good. This is where you want to focus. You want to find your center point, your equanimity, your equilibrium. But it is being flanked, you know, like uh, like a teeter-totter with five of cups, disappointment, and five of worlds, which is five of pentacles, and setback. So, yeah, I can, like, feel the heaviness in my heart <laughs> right now for you guys. I feel like, you know, maybe you guys, like, just started a business. And, you know, now businesses aren't allowed to operate. So, you know, you might not be able to continue that business. Or even if you succeed through all of this, there's, like, a major setback. Because, you know, you're not going to be able to operate for months. Or... You know, maybe you just started a new romance and now you guys are in separate places, you know, quarantined and can't get together. Um, there's definitely like a lack. You're missing something. You're missing out on something. You just, you know, you got Taurus. I have. And I'm filming this the day before the new moon in Taurus. Might not post it until the actual new moon, though. So, yeah, Taurus all about your resources and your environment and your relationship with them. Um, I really get this energy. I have uh, five of my planets are in the second house, including my son. So, you know, second house being ruled by Taurus, we have a lot of my life has been around um, worrying about not having enough. <laughs> I, I, you know, always looking for security and you, your guys' security is being threatened. But, so even though you feel shitty about it, even though you're disappointed, even though you're frustrated, even though you're really sick of the two steps forward, four steps back, trust that everything is happening exactly as it is supposed to be because you, you chose this incarnation knowing that this crap would happen to you. So you're going to be okay. And there is a point to this. You are going through a transformation. I would invite you to just stare at this card. Look at the light language here. You don't, don't need to think about it. Let your subconscious feel this card. Yeah, okay. It's like you guys need to go through this frustrating disappointment because you're being asked to figure out what is actually important in your life. What do you actually need? Do you really need that job? Do you really need that business to be successful? Do you really need that stuff? You know, maybe you have to sell your TV and stuff like that in order to pay the rent. Is that really that big of a deal? Do you need the TV? Um, you know, stuff like that. What 
you're being asked to pare away your life. And I know that sucks. I went through like shit, like 10 years of being just broke as a joke, right? Like selling my TV to pay the rent, <laughs> you know, doing, uh, watching ads on apps to like save up $5 to get an Amazon gift card to like buy a bar of soap, stuff like that. You know, I, 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 I totally get it. And I'm just, just barely coming out of, out of that. I'm just barely, you know, inching my way up into a place of financial security. So I totally understand how like endlessly frustrating that is, but so I can speak from a little bit of experience here saying that when you're pushed to like the financial brink that you really find out what's important. You really find out what's important. And, you know, that could be your family, you know, some hobby or skill that you really love that really means a lot to you that doesn't actually cost a lot of money. Like, you know, maybe you have, maybe you're a singer, right? You always have your voice, you know, no matter what else happens to you. You always have your family. Um, for you guys, I think you're being called to look all the way down. You have your soul. Look at this moon, soul. It doesn't matter what happens to you in this, in this incarnation because you have your very soul. What do you need that? What do you need more than that? What could you possibly need that that's more than that? That's everything inside of your soul is the universe in microcosm and Sorry, there somebody started mowing the lawn outside. So I'm back. <laughs> and well, I was just talking about how you guys are being called to remember that you have your soul. And that is all that really matters. The rest is like the icing on the cake. So I feel like the sooner you like get down into the core of yourself and realize, really get comfortable and really get acquainted with your own soul frequency then things will start to shift for you. And I was actually receiving a message from the Archangels before I started this video. And I think I didn't mention it yet because I didn't know who it was for. I think it's for you guys. It was, it doesn't matter how it, it is. This is kind of, it's going to sound really cliche, right? This is like a really stereotypical, like angelic message, but here we go. It doesn't matter how alone you feel or how you feel like you have nothing even if you have absolutely nothing, you've never been alone because the archangels are, they're omnipresent. They are always with you. They're, they're like these energetic grids that are flowing all over the earth and all connecting with your consciousness everywhere your consciousness exists. So you've never been alone, no matter how alone you felt. Just because you couldn't sense the angels doesn't mean they weren't there. You just weren't aware of it. And if you would like to be more consciously aware of it, all you have to do is ask. All you have to do is throw it out there. Be like, you know, hey, Michael or Metatron or what your own guardian angels, whatever you want to connect with, just throw that out there and ask and they will chime in. <laughs> they, they want to connect with you. That is, that is what they do. And they are not capable of doing anything that is bad for you. That is like, like, especially the archangels, like literally all they can do is for the good. They would never do anything not in your best interests. So, cause like literally the way they're set up, their function is to do everything for the greater good and for your personal good, just all of it, all at once. And they want you to remember or try to understand that you might feel like this little individual human and that might make it feel hard for you to connect with something like Metatron, this really like a high density angel, archangel. But to them, you know, they're not just connecting with you, the human that you are in this life. They know your soul. They know your soul like, you know, as if, you know, you're a brother or a sister to them. They know your soul. They remember, they see your soul in all of its incarnations in all of its aspects and all of its fragments, all of it. They can see all of it. They know you since the time your soul separated from source and they know you until if you ever choose to, you know, merge your soul back into source and disappear. They know all of it. So, you know, they might seem like a stranger to you but you are not a stranger to them because they know everything there is to know about you. 
they're archangels. That's what they do. That's how their consciousness exists. So you have your soul. You have your connection with your guides, your personal guardian angels, all of the archangels, and also whatever interdimensional beings you would like to co like communicate with. You have all of that. So try to transmute you know, this disappointment, this frustration about these setbacks in your life because they are not what's truly important and that is the lesson you need to learn here. Find your equilibrium, find your equanimity. It is possible to sit on a park bench and be homeless and be completely bereft of friends, family, possessions, income, jobs, all of it. If you can sit in your own internal communication with your soul and alignment with higher powers, whatever that means to you, you can transform and you can transmute all of this. And it's going to be okay, guys. And just remember that you chose, you designed this lesson for, for yourself in conjunction with your higher self and the archangels, but you designed this lesson for yourself. So you are entirely capable of surviving it and getting through it and getting to the other side because you, you designed this. It's a game. You designed it for yourself. And I think I would like to leave it at that. I think I feel like the, I can feel it like closing off. The message came through for you. So good luck, guys. Hang in there. Just remember, just remember to tune into your soul. That's all you need. Good luck, guys. See you again soon. Hey, Pile 4, welcome to your reading. You guys have Archangel Michael coming in for you. Look at this. Look at this card. If that's not Michael, I don't know what is. Just feast your eyes for a minute. Your subconscious understands this card better than your conscious mind. I feel like, okay, I mean, you guys got lunar eclipse change. This is symbolic just of the shifts you guys are going through. You might feel like you're being eclipsed, like this feeling of just like exhaustion and being suppressed, but you know, you're going to come out of that all brand new, all, all good and whole. And to me, this is also a sign that, you know, there are eclipses coming up. Like if you're watching this, you know, in spring 2020, we're going to be having some eclipses soon. Uh, so watch out for those, those around those days, you guys are going to be going through shifts. So just go where you're led on those days, do what feels right. And you'll pay attention to what is shifting around you and within you. And you don't need to worry about, oh, it's a, an eclipse, so I need to like stay home and meditate and do a ritual. I mean, if that feels right, absolutely do that. That'd be fantastic. But if you feel called to like go see a movie, if we can see movies then, or whatever, whatever, wherever you're led will be correct for you. I've spent, you know, portals doing things that really seemed completely like counterproductive or completely like non-spiritual, uh, but they ended up being <laughs> like the most cosmically ordained like asynchronous events totally designed for me to be exactly right there to go through specific shifts so don't think that you need to spend like eclipses or any kind of significant portal in a certain way because you don't know what that way is just go where you're led the, those shifts will happen exactly as they're supposed to happen when they're supposed to happen okay so yeah you guys are being i think michael would like you First of all, to connect with him, and luckily he's like probably the easiest archangel to connect with. Everybody seems to be connecting with him. All you got to do is ask, and he shows up, and he's ready to be very active and to help you and to defend you. And, you know, he's got, you know, the legion of light, as people say. Um, you know, he's got like 10,000 angels at his back. So <laughs> that's the level of protection and support you have is just you can't even imagine. Like, it seems ridiculous that one human would have so much support but luckily the the omniverse is huge and there are so many higher dimensional beings like they're at our back all the time. So down here with this queen of swords, I feel like you're like Michael would like you to kind of embody his energy 
a little bit of the like you know divine warrior fighting for just causes you know she's got this this queen of swords has this sword up here a little bit of a general but also i feel like this queen wouldn't hesitate to like jump in to the battle if she felt like that was warranted um and this is going to go well for you you've got the six of wands a little bit of victory you're riding around um I feel like you're going to get the respect you feel like you deserve and that you've never really gotten. You guys, I think in your past, you might have been a little bit shy, a little bit nervous, a little bit hesitant to like shine your light. Um, that's all about to shift. That's what Michael wants to help you do to come out of your shell, to get in alignment with your own passion, with your will, with yourself. Look at so much Leo coming out in this reading today. Look at this, Leo, I will. It is, what do you want to manifest? What do you want to shine? What, what, what is your passion? What do you want to will into existence? Get in alignment with yourself and with your higher selves and with your inner authority and higher powers. Like bring everything together, which is perfect because then you have the emperor. You can be that conduit between the cosmos and between the earth energies. If you can step into your alignment and into your authority, and that is going to give you, from there, you're going to have a newfound power to manifest. Page of Wands. You will have the staff in your hand. You will have the power of manifestation to usher in all of your new hopes, dreams, and endeavors. That was really concise. I feel like that was the main, the main thrust of the message. Um, definitely... Be open to connecting with Archangel Michael more. Um, he probably is, is coming to you in your dreams. Just, I don't know. I don't really want to give advice about how to connect with these beings because it'll be different for everybody and your intuition will, will guide you. But I do want to pull some more cards for you. Let's see. Ah, yes. Okay. Lenormand Tarot. This little deck here is read in pairs and I find that it really helps illuminate what like specifically something is about in practical way. So I know your reading was a pretty brief and a little general. So let's find out what is going on specifically. Okay, letter. I need to pull the second one here. And fish. Okay, so this letter card is pretty obviously about communication, um, transmissions, you know, handing one thing from one hand to another. Uh, and fish is all about abundance, basically. So you guys are, you have something to communicate about abundance, or you are communicating abundantly. Probably, those probably go hand in hand. So as you guys, yeah, yeah, look at that. Your abundance card came right on top of the emperor. So you guys are going to be coming into some abundance. And I think you're going to be able to share it uh, with the world. And you are, in order to manifest this abundance, it is really going to come from your own like inner work, from your own, like this isn't going to be just handed to you. You're going to manifest it. And you might have to like do a little bit of Ladder climbing, not like in a corporate ladder sense, although somebody might be doing that as well. But it's like you're going to have to take specific steps. This is kind of a, yeah, like a masculine, grounded, like step by step, almost like a planning a battle energy. So if there's something, if you have a, whatever goal you have in mind, figure out the specific steps specific things you need to do, make a practical plan in order to get there. Um, I mean, Taurus season is a great time to do that. I'm reminded of another card in another deck that is like new moon in Taurus. Make your, your, like, your goals need practical plans. And like the new moon in Taurus is tomorrow of the time that I'm filming this. So yeah, that, that card, I didn't pull it, but here it's coming through anyway. Make a practical plan. Make specific steps. Do things a little bit in the grounded, one step at a time kind of way. And that is how that is the lesson here for you guys, how to manifest your desires, like through deliberate action. 
And yeah, Michael is, you know, basically, if there is an archangel about deliberate action, it would be him. He's the one that comes down and does, does things, <laughs> right? And there might be some obstacles for you to, for you guys to overcome, but I don't see that being like a problem at all because you've got, you know, Queen of Swords, Emperor, four, Six of Wands, the Victory card, and this Page of Wands, and your willpower. So you just need to sit in your alignment Focus on your goal and don't forget to communicate your goal to others. Um, if I don't know about you guys, but for me, I'm pretty like apt to just run around and doing things myself without telling anybody about it. There's definitely a warning here to make sure to like inform the people around you and let them know what you're doing because they, they can uh, help you. Uh, if you don't need any help, they can, you know, stay out of your way and they won't get if you don't tell them what you're doing, they could be like, why didn't you tell me what's going on? Why are you acting like this? So just make sure to like let people know what's happening. Um, do everything in your integrity, in your alignment, and it will all come, come for you guys. Watch out for eclipse season because I think this is, this is a little bit of a forecasting energy. So when you get closer, when we get closer to the eclipse, check in on this again and ask what, what you're manifesting and how that's going. So I think I'm going to leave it at that. Thank you so much for tuning in, guys, and I hope to see you again soon. Bye.